Don't receive flesh worship. Flesh worship, you have your hands lifted up, but your mind somewhere else. No, no, he, 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 he looks for true worship. They honor him with, his li- with your lips. And your heart is seeking him. He's on your mind. He's on your, your memory. Jesus said he's looking for true worshipers. Come on, keep worshiping. Keep, keep, keep. Come on, lift, lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Glory to God. Come on, let him know. Lord, I know I ain't perfect, but I love you. Come on, let him know this evening. Let him know. Let him know. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Praise him. Listen, I got, I got to read, share something before I even give the service. Before we move into the service, I got to share this before I give you the seals. But in Matthew 24, <clears throat> say this, I have to, I have to connect, connect in such a capacity, such a capacity. Most, don't most don't understand. Most don't have, Most don't have. And, some say it's too much. and some say it's too much. Can I say that again? Yes. I have to connect. Make it personal. I have to connect. I have to connect. In such a capacity. In such a capacity. Most don't understand. Most don't, understand. Most don't, have. Most don't have. And some say it's too much. And some say it's too much. Listen, Jesus said this in Matthew 24, 10. Hey, neighbor, it's only getting closer. It's only getting closer. In Matthew 24, 10, Jesus said, <clears throat> Boy, I feel the Spirit of God just come on me. And then shall many be offended. And one shall betray another and shall hate another. Wow. Wow. They're talking about signs before the end times, right? Yeah. They're talking about signs before the end times. And Jesus said, Jesus said, many shall be offended, betray one another, and even hate one another. So how many know, you, 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 you know we're living in end times. So you have to understand that the times are ripe for this. Listen, listen, heaven. The times are ripe for this. So see, you and I have to guard our heart by even guarding my, the company I keep. He said even some of the elect will fall. Remember he said that? He said even even people uh, that were chosen will fall. Right? So so I got to... See, I've got... See, because this actually even is going to protect your soul. We got to guard our heart. Guard our soul. The word of God said you got to guard your soul. Above man, above us. Boy, you better guard that heart. With everything you got, with all diligence. Amen. Now, 
Matthew 15, verse 12 through 15. Watch this. I'm just going to give it to you the way God gave it to me, and then we'll move on with the service. But I got to get this because uh, this will help you. Amen. I'm, 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 watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm accountable for your soul. Amen. Do you know that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I got to make sure, though, I gave you everything God gave me to give to you and not hold back regardless what you may think. Okay? I think the Apostle Paul said, Have I now become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Right? That was the Apostle Paul. Have I become your enemy because, because I tell you the truth? Matthew 15, verse 12 through 14. Now watch this. Now, Jesus corrected the Pharisees, the religious leaders, right? And now the disciples make this comment to Jesus. Don't you know you offended the Pharisees with what you just said? You know what he told them? The truth. The truth. They said, don't you know you offended them with what you just said? How many of y'all love Jesus? I love him, man. He was, uh, he wasn't no punk. That's the kind of pastor I like, man. He ain't no punk. He would say something, didn't matter if everybody left. He made one, one statement, and, and his own disciples, they, they were labeled as disciples, followers of Christ. The Bible says, John 6, 66, and they followed Jesus no more. He turned to his other disciples today. Uh, y'all going to? Yeah, yeah, come on. Well, they say, well, where do we go? Yeah. Jesus replied, listen to this. Every plant which my heavenly father didn't plant will be uprooted. So leave them alone. Another translation says, so ignore them. Can I tell you what the Holy Spirit told me? When offense removes folks, leave them alone. When people leave because they get offended with your man or woman of God, I you you just I'm gonna show you in a minute more scriptures. I just leave them alone. See, when you if you get offended with my man of God, that's fine. But don't call me. (laughs) See, because I have to guard my heart. And you left because you're offended. Now I've got to go my heart because now you could say something to me that could cause me to get offended. And I ain't trying to fall away. I'm trying to walk in offense. I ain't trying to get bitter. I'm getting better. So I got to guard my heart. And Jesus told him, he said, look, every plant that my head falls didn't plant, they're going to be uprooted. And you know, so he told him, leave them alone. Don't talk about them, but don't conversate with them either. Now, there are some that will leave because of offense, but the Holy Spirit's got to deal with them. And now, if they reconnect, they reconnect. Romans 16 and 17 says this. Romans 16 and 17. How many love the word of God? Now I beseech thee, brethren. Who's he talking to? The church, the believers. Mark them that cause divisions. They cause offense. Contrary to the teaching... The doctrine would you learn and avoid them. He said, mark them, make a note of them, and then avoid them. What did Jesus say? Leave them alone. Ignore them. Avoid them. Why? See, I, because, because you, you fell away for a reason. See, see you got to understand. what. See, Jesus knew Satan. I said, Jesus knew Satan. And he said, every, see, well, can, 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 I, can I be real for a second? 
Are you sure? Uh, I don't know if I can be that real. Can I be real? Are you sure? Everybody that's in here. Oh, Jesus. I don't know, man, if I can say it. I don't know if I should say it. I don't know if I should say it. Not every, let me say it like this. Not everyone that's here, God planned you here. Some, some, somebody in here, you've been planted by the enemy to try and cause division. To try and cause strife. I pray you be uprooted in Jesus' name. Father, come on, let everyone lift up your hand. And you need to pray this over your life. You need to pray this over your ministry. Father, in Jesus' name, uproot, expose, reveal. Remove those that the enemy has planted to cause strife, to cause division in Jesus' name. And replace them with those who have our best interests at heart, who have your kingdom agenda at heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See, see, and, and even those of you watching, they're going to watch on, on Periscope, they're going to watch on YouTube. See, I'm not just saying this for this house. This, that's for every house. Every house should, should, should take this and teach this. Every house. We just want to fill up the building. No, you don't. Because Satan will throw some seeds in there. You see? We'll get them saved. Come on. Not everybody wants to get saved. Come on. You know not, you know that, right? Not everybody wants to get saved. No, I'm talking about not everybody. Okay, let me say it like this. Not everybody wants to get converted. Because that means I would have to stop doing the sin that I like. I just want to love Jesus and do my thing. Then you don't love Jesus. Jesus said, you know, if you love me, you'll obey me. Okay, okay, married folks, tell your spouse, I love you, but I ain't going to do nothing you want me to do. See if they're they, if they really going to believe that. Oh, yeah, you love me. No, you don't love me. Oh, there'd be some things you wouldn't do. You know it hurts me. Well, I'm, preach, I'm preaching good. You see what I'm saying? See, so y'all hear me in the, in, the, in the foyer over there? All right. See, because if God planted me here, guess who don't want me here? Come on. Come on. Ah, come on. And then, and then, uh, uh, I ain't got, that's it. All right? Y'all got it? Yes, sir. And the, the, reason, the reason now, I've, I've, I've got to be so on this. Okay, okay, okay can I, let me just give this to you. Come over here, babe. My wife and I, 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 and I don't even care who hears. Come over here. Get close to me. We went to a wedding in Columbus, Ohio. And I remember we were... Uh, you know, I don't know if you know, you know everyone knows this. My my apostle, and 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 um, the majority of the people that I'm close to are African American, right? And so we were invited to a wedding. Well, same thing at the wedding. The majority of everyone is African American. We we we're, we're like at home. We go to Columbus, Ohio. We, it's like we're at home. It's like we're at FCF. When we go to World Life Christian Center, it's like we're at F, we're at home. We don't look at color. And so we're there, and we're there, but uh, uh, some of the, the, the people that we talked to were talking with this one guy. Stella, I didn't even know him, but my, my spirit would not let me get near him, remember? And I, and I told you, I said, I don't know what it is about this guy. I don't even, I don't know who he is. I never met him. I never met him. Okay, watch. See, if you want to protect 
your soul, the Holy Spirit will help. Amen. And see, so I didn't know. And so, and so, and so, there, we're, we're, so me and my wife, we're sitting off in the back. And, and one, of the, one of the pastors, he said, he said, Mark, he said, come here. And I told him, no, I'm, I'm okay. And he just kind of looked at me because it was just me and her. And we, how long did we wait? For like two hours. We waited while they prepared everything for the reception. And so we're there. And y'all got a second? And so we're there. Bring my time down to 30 minutes. And so, and so we're there. And, and, and I, I felt bad. And so I called him. I, I texted him. I said, Pastor Brown, can you, can you call me when you get a chance? And he called me the next day. He said, I, I said, I just, I just felt like I need to apologize because I didn't want you to think I was being rude when you were calling us over there. But I just didn't want to, for some reason, I didn't want to go. I said, I felt like, I said, man, I don't know if I'm being judgmental. I said, I don't know. You correct me if I'm wrong. I said, but my spirit was grossed out by that gentleman. I didn't know who he was. I said, but my spirit, it just felt ugh, like, don't go. Stay away from him. He said, Marcus, that used to be one of Apostle's sons in the ministry. He left wrong. He helped me. I know who, I mean, well, I feel, well, listen, listen, watch. I mean, it, like, it was, it, I felt bad. But after that, I knew Holy Spirit was protecting me. Because he planted me. No matter what anybody else says, listen, apostle may not be their apostle, but he's my apostle. He's our apostle. He may not be, but he's mine. God connected me with him. I didn't ask to be. I mean, the way he did it, it was supernatural. It was supernatural. I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't looking. I mean, God did it. So you just got to learn how to uh, flow and recognize that right here, the, Jesus already let us know, the enemy is going to try and, and, and plant some to, to cause division. And so, and, and, and so, in, uh, so I happened to go, watch this, can I help you? So I happened to go to his Twitter page, and I seen on his vacation, he was still going with one of the other main men from Apostle. Well, now today, that guy left too. You see? I, I, I have to connect. See, you can say what you want about me. Say I'm in the, say, I don't care what you say. But I have to connect in such a capacity that there's no room for you to plant anything in me. Because, because I ain't trying to be outside the will of God. In, in, now, see, I could leave and still be saved. I ain't talking about that. But I'm talking about my call. My, you see what I'm saying? Heaven on earth. Have, yeah, that's, and, and that's what we've had since then. So, uh, anyways, just recognize the enemy's always going to try and plant someone to try and sideswipe you and just keep pulling you further and further away. Until, and now it's not a big deal. And, and really, it is a big deal. God created connection. He funnels. Okay, that, that's it. I got, that's it. Amen? Amen. Were you going to say something? Oh, that's good. Amen. Amen. I thought you were saying something to, to preach. <laughs> Give me a point from Sunday. Who's got a point from Sunday? Quickly. Hurry. M&M's. Hurry. Quickly. What? You can think yourself out of everything God has for you. m &Ms. All right. <laughs> That's it? He got it? Oh, there we That's your, <laughs> That's your brand? That's it. All right, here we go. Let's get, let, we're going to seal this today. Uh, can, can, can I, can, let, let me be a little bit bold. If you have issues with praying in other tongues, stop it already. That's the Holy Ghost. God created it. Gave it to the church. Jesus said they would, they would pray in other tongues. They would speak in other tongues. After him. He said, okay. See, this was, this was a gift for the New Testament church. 
It was the, uh, the jewel, the jewel gift. It was rare. No one else did it. But this church, and, and the apostle Paul said, I pray more in tongues than all of y'all. Yeah. He said, I wish y'all prayed as much as I did in other tongues. And so we're going to learn today about the, the power the, that, that comes with praying in other tongues. And but some things that are made available to you through it. My God. Okay. So uh, are you ready? I want you to say this. Uh, changes changes. Are, coming. are coming. I've never seen before. They will give my life a new grip. And it will never slip into normal, average postures again. Pray about that. Changes are coming. You've never seen before. Some of y'all are going to experience some blessings. You've never, you've been, man, you've been waiting to see. You're going to see it this year. These changes that are coming, they will give your life new grips. That your life will never slip into normal, average postures again. I just heard this. Listen to what I just heard. Listen to what I just heard. Your life will never slip below average again. He, my God. It's never going to be, you'll never be below average. Jesus, man. Golly. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may be seated. You may be seated quickly. Uh, so we saw Naaman, Nahum, Nahum, chapter 1, verse 2 through 3. Uh, this is the continuation from, from last Wednesday. This was the second part I didn't get to, to preach because we ran out of time. Look, you come here, you never know how the chair is going to be set up. I'll, I'll change them next week sometimes. I just, I just be in, I just start to worship and start praying. I just start changing the, the seats. Y'all need to pray for my wife. She's not letting me change the bedroom. I need to change it. Like it's like I'm itching. Like I need to change this. And she's like, "No, I already got stuff hung up." I'm like I need to change it. I need to rearrange. It just ain't working. I'll be like, how often would I rearrange the furniture in the living room? <laughs> That's how I roll. Hey, how many of y'all excited about the front? Yeah. They say uh, within four weeks they'll be done. Yeah. Wow. Just so you get an idea. The whole, I mean, it's going to be from top to bottom. It's going to be plastered like a gray color. And then in between, like each section is going to be a half of a pillar, half of a column. And, uh, and then later, then we're going to get lights, and then it's going to get lit up. And then we want, we want to get, like, some of these lights uh, and put them on each pillar. Yeah. Like, coming down. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming. Like. And then we're going to, well, on this side. And, oh, 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 hold on. And, and, uh, she in the back. We just got, FCF just got blessed with another 1,500 square foot building. I receive. Yeah. So that makes it over, over 10,000 square feet uh, that, that FCF was, was blessed with. Just what we have so far is a praise for over 600,000. Uh, now I don't know where it's going to be, and, and God just gave it to us. Faithful. Faithful. And, so we, and, it, and then after they finish here, they're going on this side all the way to the end. And so, so then the next one, we're going to renovate that building. And... Uh, we won't have to go anywhere. We have our own uh, fellowship hall, and uh, we'll do other stuff in there. It's gonna, it, we, we've got, we've got uh, big plans, so glory to God. Glory to God. Stepping, stone. Stepping stone. Opportunities, Opportunities. For, bigger for bigger and better things, and better things. Are, coming are coming my way. Amen. Amen. Nahum chapter 1. Now, uh, uh, during prayer last Tuesday, Minister Betsy says she saw a whirlwind, and as it was coming, it was destroying things that were worthless, impure, but behind its wake, it was leaving it restored and beautiful. Amen. Nahum chapter 1, and then God gave me this scripture uh, without trying to find it, just uh, at that Tuesday afternoon as I was seeking him and spending time. I told you I quit reading the Bible. 
No, see, when you open this, you don't read. You seek God. You're spending time with the Father. So you got to renew your mind. So, it's, oh, I, I read today. I said, oh, that's what you do? You read a book? No, see, I'm not reading. I'm seeking God. I'm spending, see, because his name is the word of God. The, the, the word became flesh. See, so whenever I'm, I, I reopen this, I'm not reading. I'm spending time with the Father. And so that's an important uh, appointment. So everything else gets shut off. Phone gets shut off. Silence. You know, or, or need to create you an uh, auto response. Click it. I'm, I'm spending time with the Father. Father, I'll call you back. Uh, door don't get answered. No, I'm in an, an important meeting here. I ain't got time. Amen? Amen. This, this, this true story, this gentleman, he flew across the, 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 the world to meet with this gentleman. And he showed up at his house. And his wife came. She said, may I help you? Is, is, is so-and-so here? She said, yes. He said, but uh, he's busy right now. Can you come back later? He said, yeah. So he comes back later, and he shows up again. He said, uh, so-and-so. She said, yeah, but he's, he's still busy, sir. He said, can I help you? He said, well, do, do you know who I am? He said, don't you know who I am? I flew across the world to come in and meet with him. And she said, sir, you don't understand. You don't understand who he's meeting with. He's in there with God the Father. And so if you're more important than him, I'll go interrupt him, but are you seeing what I'm saying? See, quit treating your time with God like it's just something that you made time for. No, I make time for all this other stuff. This, this is what, who I am. This is what I do. Someone shout, God first. God first. All right. Uh, verse 2, God said right here, uh, God is jealous. The Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth. He, in his fear is the Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. Come on, all the enemies. All the enemies of the kingdom. All the enemies of Jesus. My God. Are you ready? And he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger, great in power, and will, not, uh, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind. He has his way where? Now, uh, so I just want to remind you of a word from last Tuesday. He said, remind them, FCF is in its seventh year, its seventh season. And in this season is a season of completion. It is the season of wholeness for FCF. And he said, I am even completing what the enemy was doing, meaning... I am bringing an end to what he was doing. He started it, but I'm finishing it. Everything Satan was doing in your life comes to an end. This year, in Jesus' name. I need you to receive this. And I believe, I believe the Spirit of the Lord said, uh, take what you want. In this service, take what you want. I receive that. Amen. Uh, verse, uh, in the end of 15, he said, uh, the wicked shall no more pass through you. He is utterly cut off. My God. He is utterly cut off. Verse 9 says, What do you imagine you will do against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Affliction will not rise up a second time. Amen. So now let's go to our key verse, key text for tonight. Ezekiel chapter 37. But we're going to begin on verse 11. And then we'll come back to verse 1. We're going to start on verse 11 though. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, to Glory to God. How many of y'all enjoying learning about the soul? And, 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 and really how to possess it. Anybody uh, work on their M&Ms this week? One, one young man that was here, uh, him and his, his wife been having some issues, and he said that very next day, uh, she tried to pop off. He said, hey, eat some different M&Ms. 
And she just started laughing, and it killed everything. You've been watching Pastor Marcus Flores at Faith Christian Fellowship. Here at FCF, we are seeing miracles, signs, and wonders. We believe that as the word is being ministered, that something miraculous will happen to you too, and we would love to celebrate with you. Let us know of your salvation, rededication, and your testimony. If you have a prayer request, or even to sow seed, you can do all that by going online at fcfplainview.org, or you can send it by mail, or call the number on the screen. God bless you. Now, back to the service. Ezekiel 37, verse 11, and the New King James says, Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Now remember, God is always present. But we can be absent from his presence in the flesh. God is always present, but we can be absent from his presence when we're in the flesh. So, when I'm functioning in the flesh, I am absent from his presence even though he is present. Make sense? Okay. Verse 12. Now listen to this. Because God, look at me, God is teaching the man of God how to function. How to function in his role. How to function in his dominion. His authority. Okay? So yeah, but he was talking to the prophet. Yeah, but now you have the ultimate prophet living on the inside of you. You have Christ in you, the hope of glory. My goodness. Let me, let me just share with you what, what, what God gave me this morning. No, maybe it was the other day. I don't remember. I'll tell you. February 1st. Do you remember the evil spirit, Mark 5? Uh, the evil spirit, uh, 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 the Bible says that the evil spirit said, don't, please don't torment me. Remember that? He said, please don't torment me. And then it says, for Jesus told him, come out of him, you unclean spirit. Do you remember that? So, 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 Jesus told him, come out of him, you unclean spirit. And the unclean spirit responded, please don't torment me. Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. That's the authority you got. Amen. Here's, how, here's, how, here's how he painted the picture for me. Do you remember when you were young? Or, for those of you who got kids... And you're about, to, you're about to catch a whooping. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Do you remember them days? Oh, yeah. and, and they called you. Uh -huh. Marcos, come here. What? Get over here. Are you going to hit me? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Yes, I ain't going then. Yeah. Are you going to hit me? And then you would try to. Yeah. <laughs> that way. And then, and then they, they get ready to swing you, just take off. That's what this evil spirit was doing. Are you going to hit me? If I come out, are you going to hit me? If I come out, are you going to hit me? That's the same authority you got, Desi. See, you and I got to, got to, we got to stop begging for everything. And some things you just need to take dominion. Some attacks, you just need to start taking some dominion. And you start telling it what's it going to do and what, how it's going to be. Because Christ in me, the hope of glory, and you have that same power. You have that same authority. You have that same dominion. And some of you wasting all these times begging when you just start, need to just start dominating. No, I, we ain't going to be sick. No, 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 we ain't going to be broke. He said he would give us a surplus. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 28, 28, the blessing of the Lord. Man, he, he said he, he command Jesus, man. He said he would command the blessing to, in our storehouse, a, a, in, your, in your account. He would command it. My God. The Bible says he would command plenty of goods to come upon you. 
The Amplified says he would command a surplus of prosperity. Jesus, man. See, so now I ain't going to be broke. And see, so what's happening, though, too many of you, you ain't living by faith. Can I tell you what the Holy Spirit showed me? You see, the Holy Spirit showed me. Uh, Jesus said he's looking for those. I know I'm getting off, but I'll, I'll come back. Jesus said uh, uh, God is looking for true worshipers. You know what he found? A lot of beggars. He found true beggars. Oh, Lord, if you would only. God said, don't you know I already said you could? Jesus. You're going to have to start taking some things by force. God said, look, I've already paid for everything. You just need You just start needing. Oh, man, we're going to deal with the beggars. Golly. Okay. So, so, so he said, uh, uh, what did I just say? Before that. He's looking for true worshipers, right? True, true worshipers. The Holy Spirit told me, when you are living by faith, when you are living by faith, that's the mark of a true worshiper. When you're living by faith, you are a walking worship song. He said, when you are living by faith, you are a walking worship song. See, see, singing songs is not, God, God's not, anyone can sing a song. Come on. But have you noticed that well, it's a whole lot different to live by faith? Yeah, yeah. Come on. Those are the true worshipers. See, watch. Jesus, man. See, true worshipers trust God when, 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 when it seems hopeless. Yes, sir. True worshipers trust God and live by faith when it seems like there's no answer. True worshipers trust God when it went, when, oh, my God. And so their life is evidence. See, that's a true worshiper. That's a true worshiper. A person that lives by faith. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. And many of us are trying to please him with a song. And not our life. Do you see what I'm saying? See, we're trying to please him with a song. And not with our life. But when you are living by faith, you are a walking worship song. Come on, come on. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. I don't know how we got over there. That was for somebody. So, Ezekiel. Therefore, pro- now look, 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 look. Okay, he's teaching the man. So, prophesy. Look, he didn't tell him, ask me. Come on, we're, t- someone say, we're, tell your neighbor, we're in training. We're in training. Tell your neighbor, we're in, we're in training. He did not say, ask me. Where did I go? Ask me. Uh, no, no, no. He said, prophesy. Say to them, thus says the Lord God. Behold, O my people, I will open up your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Then you will know that I, the Lord, my God, opened, I opened up your graves, brought you up from your grave. I'll put my spirit in you. You shall live. My God. All right, let's go to verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me, but see, see, set me down in the midst of the valley. And, I, and it was full of bones. What was it full of? And he caused me to pass by them around. And behold, there, was a, there were very many in the open valley. Indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And so I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, Now look, prophesy to these bones. Tell them what to do. Yeah. Dominate. Come on, tell your neighbor, dominate. Oh, Lord, if you would only make these dry bones here. No, no, no. Prophesy. Tell them. Well, I, I feel some rising up, man. I'm trying. Oh, dry bones. Tell them. Oh, dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely... 
I will cause breath to enter to you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you, bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. Come on, write that down. There was a, underline that. There was a noise. Jesus. And suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and, and the flesh came upon them. The skin covered them. But yet, there was still no life. There was still no breath. All right? Verse 9. Here we go. Someone shout, winds of change. Winds of, change. Winds of power. Also, he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath. Now, before I go any, any further, say this. We do not, we do not pray, to the wind. pray to the wind. We command the wind. We command the wind. Come on, say, I do not pray to the wind. See, I'm not, I'm not teaching you to pray to the wind. But I'm about to teach you how to command the wind. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So he said, so he said, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come on, you read it with me, ready? Read, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and break on the slain, that they may live. What did he say? Prophesy to the, to the four winds. What are the four winds? North, south, east, west. Never eat sour watermelons. Come on, say, I don't pray to the wind. I command the wind. Now, did you see that there was a noise and a rattling and a wind? Did you see that? Okay, go to Acts chapter 2. Quickly, hurry. He said, tell the four winds. Jesus, man. Tell you, the Holy Ghost is going to help us. Acts chapter 2, in nine minutes, he's going to help us. They were all in one accord, verse 2, and suddenly there came a sound, a noise from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared on them divided tongues as a fire. My God. And, 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 and sat upon each one. And they, bega- they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. So now what we're going to do, we're going to look at these, each, each of these winds that were used in the Scripture. And God said, I'm going to send my east wind, my west wind. And so what I want you to know and I want what you to recognize is that when you're praying in the Holy Ghost, when you're praying, building, your, building up your most holy faith, I want you to know these winds are working on your behalf. And, and, and when you remember, when the Holy Spirit brings these to remembrance, I want you to begin to command that wind, east wind, begin to remove every barrier. Everything, watch, I'm going to show you, my God. Okay, let, let's just go to work. Hurry, let's go to work. I may not be able to give you, I'm going to try, I'm going to try and give you all the wins. Because I may not come back again uh, uh, to this, to this again. Hosea uh, uh, 13, 15. I'm not going to wait, I'm just going to flow. Uh, Hosea 13, 15. Though, though he is fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come. The wind of the Lord shall come from the wilderness. Then his spring shall become dry. His fountain shall be dried up, and he shall plunder the treasury of every desirable pride. Did you see that? He called the east wind the wind of the Lord. Did you see that? He called the east wind the wind of the Lord. Did you see that? The east wind is a warning to evildoers. It's a warning to evildoers. You better get something straight. Now, let me give you this. The east wind also represents destruction and judgment, meaning it removes all barriers of enemies. Golly. I'm going to show, I'm going to show you, Elder Jose, how this, I mean, watch this. It removes, all, I'm talking about your enemies, children of God, 
If you're a child of God, just jump up real quick. Jump up and sit down. Do like a wave. Everybody sit down. If you're a child of God, as I move my hand, just do the wave. Ready? Go. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Oh, y'all look good. Y'all look good. All right. See, why? See, I'm going to shout, I'm a child of God. This wind is for you. It's the wind of the Lord. And what it does, watch, I've got to calm down. Marcus, calm down. I get excited, man. I'm just, I'm so passionate about the word of God. It changed my life. I wouldn't be married to this dime if I, if I didn't have the word. She, she didn't, but Jesus. Okay, I got to go. I got to go. Praise God for the word. I want me a treasure. Elder Jose, you want you a treasure? Praise the Lord. It removes. Fee, did you get you a treasure? Oh, okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> she said, you better say yes. <laughs> it removes. Listen, the east wind. It removes all barriers of enemies. Every barrier of enemies standing in your way. It removes every Goliath of your life. It removes, I'm going to prove it to you. It removes every Red Sea. Every wall of Jericho. Sorry, Jericho. The east wind is a very fierce and powerful wind. Exodus chapter 10, quickly. Exodus chapter 10. I feel, man, I feel a heat just like on my head. Maybe it's, I don't have no hair. I don't know. <laughs> Exodus chapter 10, verse 8. So Moses and Aaron were brought again to Pharaoh. And he said to them, Pharaoh said to Moses, Go serve the Lord your God. Who are the ones that are going? Moses said, We're going with our young and with our old. We're going with our sons. We're going with our daughters. We're going with our flocks. Our herds, we're all going to go because we must hold a feast of the Lord. You know what they were going to go do? They were going to go worship. Then he said to them, then the Lord had better be with you when I let you go and your little ones go. Well, see, he was being sarcastic. He said, then God better be with you because I'm going to come get you. You ain't taking you Ain't, ain't, anyone, ain't no one, everybody in your family going to worship? Only one person in your family going to worship. Oh. I'm talking to everyone that has, that, that the enemy is coming against your family. And don't want to let everybody worship at the same time. Command that east wind. I'm getting a revelation right now. This just dropped in my spirit. I, I didn't hear this when the apostle, apostle shared this. this didn't, listen, it's like, it's like, man, why does it always seem like this is just one person on fire? And then, and then, and then it's just like a switch. It's like a switch. You got an enemy. Send the niece win. Gee, okay, watch. I'm show, let me show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. My goodness. Beware, for evil is ahead of you. Not so. Go now, you that are men, men only. Serve the Lord, for that is what you desire. And they were, so, so, so basically he told them, oh, let, let me read in the message. You're up to no good. It's written all over your face. Nothing doing. Just the men are going, go ahead and worship God. That's what you want so badly. So go. You can go, but no, no, your, your kids ain't going to go worship. Your women ain't going to go worship. Just the men. No, I don't want just to go worship God by myself. I want my family to worship God. I want my children to worship God. I want my, my wife to worship God. I want, I may, I, my animals are going to worship God. I may have to sacrifice one of them suckers. I may have to give. Oh, I ain't going empty-handed. Are you ready? Are y'all ready? Amen. Come on, are y'all ready? Amen. Someone say, the east wind, the east wind. is God's wind. God's wind. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, all the hell that is left. So Moses stretched out his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord brought an east wind on the land all that day and all that night. When it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. My God, did y'all feel that? I felt the spirit. I said, did y'all feel that? 
What? God brought the east wind. The east wind. Bring judgment on everything that's been trying to hold you and your family back. Everything that's been trying to hold your ministry back. Shh. You getting something? Oh, I thought you, you looked like you had something to say. Everything that's trying to hold your ministry back. Everything trying to hold your life back from worship. Someone shout, I don't pray to the wind. I command the wind. Come on, say this. The affairs of my church, of my life, will move beyond the normal standard after today. Shout if you believe that. All right. Exodus 14. I'm not going to wait for you. Exodus 14, verse 13. Exodus 14, verse 13. Moses said to the people, do not, now they done left. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. So the Egyptians whom you see today, you will see them no more. That enemy you see. After today, you ain't going to see him no more. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry? Tell the children of Israel, go forward. But lift up your rod, worship, stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it. The children of Israel will go on dry ground to the midst of the sea, and it will be hard, and, and I will harden the heart of the Egyptians. They're going to follow you, and I'll, I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, chariots, horsemen. The Egyptians will know that I, the Lord, have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, the chariots, and the horsemen. Verse 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. God stretched out his, he he sent out his strong, fearful east wind that whole night to hold back the barrier that was keeping his children from moving forward. My God. I believe that's why God had me make up. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> the east wind works for you personally. Harabakaya. Every, every, every barrier. Hurabakaya. See, remember he said that wind came in. My God. Filled them with the Holy Ghost. Come on, man. Are y'all seeing this? Okay, let's quickly. I gotta go. I, I gotta move on. So you got the east wind, right? Oh, I'm out of time. Y'all want the other wind, real quick? I'll give them to you real quick. You want them? West wind. It is a very mild. Now watch. I want you because you're gonna see the the differences in them, Gary. You're gonna see. So God, you saw what God did with the east wind, right? It was a warning to every enemy. You better. You better. You better step back. Right? You see, you see that? It was a warning to evildoers. And then it was also, it, it would remove barriers from God's children. That were keeping them back so, they, so that they would, so that was trying to hold them back from worship. The west wind is a very mild wind, but is a very favorable wind. It is his wind of mercy and grace. See, uh, uh, after the, the, uh, after the uh, locust, Pharaoh repented. See, it destroyed the land. The land was in desolation, was de- destroyed. Exodus chapter 10, verse 16. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste and said, I've sinned against the Lord your God, and I've sinned against you. Therefore, please forgive my sin. Only this once. <laughs> but, 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 but look, God, God hears repentance. He was sincere at that moment. Now, therefore, plead with my this once and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. So he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord turned a very strong. The Lord turned a very strong west wind. And it took the locusts away and blew them into the Red Sea. Did you see that? It removed the destruction. It removed the judgment. You know what that is? Mercy. God had mercy. God's west wind is a very uh, 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 favorable wind. 
It is his wind of mercy and of grace. It is his wind of restoration. Are y'all getting this? Now, the south wind is his wind of provision, destination, and the Holy Spirit gave me this, and opportunity. Uh, Acts 27. I've got to hurry. Acts 27. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are y'all glad you came tonight? Amen. You're getting some, 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 some treasure right here. Come on, say that. We don't pray to the wind. No, no, no. We command the wind. Yeah. Oh, they worship the wind. Absolutely not. That's God's. He said, I'm going to send my east wind, my west wind. He told the prophet, command the four winds. You see, they work for you. Come on, tell your neighbor, the winds work for us. Shh. They're, they're trying to get your life. They're trying to restore some stuff. They're trying to remove some stuff. Uh, Acts 27, 13, quickly. Then when the south wind blew softly, supposing they had obtained their desire, putting out to sea, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after, a tempest head wind arose. But first, a, the, a south wind blew. And it, it helped them get to their destination. It was pushing them to, closer to where they needed to go. Now, Acts, Acts 28. Now, here's the one opportunity. There's what God showed me, opportunity. Acts 28, quickly, and then I'll show you the provision. Acts 28, 13. From there we circled around, reached, I don't know how to say that city. And after one day the south wind blew, and the next day we came to, I don't know how to say that city. And we found their brethren, and were invited to stay with them seven days. For seven days they were able to stay with them. You know what they did with them? Minister the word of the Lord. God's south wind will provide opportunity. Opportunities to witness. Opportunities to minister. The Holy Spirit said, I want you praying uh, uh, over Elder Jose, the south wind, for opportunities that he didn't know were there available for him. So I've been speaking, Lord, blow your, let your south wind blow on your son Jose, that he can have the opportunity he's been looking for, the opportunity he's been believing for. And you're going to reach your destination. And then Psalm 78, Psalm 78, I haven't stopped praying for you, sir. And he caused an east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he brought in the south wind, and he rained meat on them like the dust. Feathered fowl like the sands of the sea, and he let them fall in the midst of the camp all around their dwelling. So they ate and were filled, for he gave them their own desire. It blew in, his south wind blew in the provision that they were desiring, the provision that they were needing. They were needing to eat. Are you seeing that? The south wind is also his provision. Now, when Apostle said the north wind is, now watch the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost knows how to talk to me. Because I'm a very scriptural person. I'm a very studious person. And so you can tell me something. And you may see it, but if I don't see it, I, 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 I won't back off, but I'm saying, okay, I need to see. I need, Lord, you got to show me. I'm not going to give up on it. I'm not going to say, well, I didn't see it, so I'm just going to give up on it. No, no, no. I know it's there. So, Lord, I need you to show this to me, so I need to see it for me, okay? So, so the north wind, write this down, is growth and harvest and promotion. And so, growth, harvest, and promotion. So, the scripture that Apostle gave was Solomon 4.16. Song of Solomon 4.16. Now, when I read it again, okay, I saw, I said, okay, yes, sir, I see the growth now. I saw it then. Solomon, Song of Solomon 4.16. Awake, O north wind, 
and come, O south wind. Blow on my garden that its spices may flow out. Let my beloved come to this garden and eat its pleasant fruits. Let, let, let my garden grow. Blow, south wind blow and let it grow. But I, but, but, but I didn't see it. I said, Holy Ghost, I need you to help me. And right there, the Holy Spirit gave me a scripture. Psalm 75, verse 6. It says this. Watch this. Are you ready? I'll get, this is one of my favorite scriptures. I quote it to you. You ready? Look at me. He said, promotion comes not from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. And then it ends there. Promotion comes not from the east. It comes not from the west. And it don't come from the south. And then it's a period. Am I right? So then where does it come from? God's north wind. Someone say, blow north wind. Blow on my finances. Blow on my career. Blow on my ministry. Blow on my life. Blow on my marriage. Blow on my children. Blow, north wind, blow. Harabakaya. Harabashundo. Jesus, man. And so when you pray in tongues, you are blowing the four winds of God in every direction. And everything that's trying to hinder you, trying to stop you. Are y'all seeing this? Start commanding. Start telling how it's going to be. God taught the prophet how to command his wind. The winds are for renewal, refreshing, revival, resurrection, rejuvenation, restoration. It's for your life. We don't pray to the wind. We command the wind. I hope I helped you tonight. When you're in your prayer closet and you're praying this out, command his wind. He said, hey, tell my wind. He, he taught him that. Hey, tell my wind. First thing, you do is, first thing you do is get that east wind in there. Remove some things and it'll be removed. Let that west wind come and bring restoration. Can I tell you something? Because sometimes that west wind is going to remove people that hurt. Sometimes that east wind is going to remove people that, that when he removes them, obviously, it'll hurt for a little bit. Oh, yeah. No, I'm serious. I remember when God did that with us. We were, we were laying on the bed, and my wife's weeping and began asking me, did we do the right thing? And then the word of the Lord came to me. Or we, prayed in, we prayed in tongues. We laid on the bed, and we just weeping. And then we started praying in, in the spirit, praying in tongues. And the wind came in, and he said, Behold, I am your God, you are my people. I will remove this distress and bring you into your wealthy place. And at that moment, peace hit the room. And we knew we did the right thing. Amen? Let that west wind come, bring restoration, bring, 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 bring mercy. And that south wind and then that north wind, boy, they work together. Bring growth. Now bring provision, uh, direction, even opportunities. And then she heard that stepping stones. Stepping stones are opportunities for bigger and better things. That's his south wind. The provision you need and then the north wind, it's your promotion. Growth, harvest. Amen? Amen. Blow, four winds, Blow. Have you ever heard anything like this? Me neither. And, but it's all right there. I, pr- I showed you in the scripture. He commanded his. He, 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 God said, this is mine. 
But he showed his man of God how to use it. It's still available for you today. Use it. Some of them barriers, you know, are in us. Some, we, we're carrying some of them own barriers in us. Eat, eat, I need to blow some of this stuff out of me. Amen? I hope I helped you tonight. If you're here tonight and you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, you don't have access to the winds without Jesus. <clears throat> if, if you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, if you're watching by, 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 by internet, or uh, if you've never received Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, where you're at right there, just, just lift your hand and say, I, I need Jesus. If that's you, just right there where you're at, just raise your hand. Raise your hand. I've never received Jesus Christ as Lord of my life, and I'm ready to take that step. It's time. It's time. Praise God. You're saved, aren't you? Mom. She, oh my, she said, I'm ready to repent. Restoration. If you need to restore your relationship with Jesus, right there where you're at, just lift your hand. Pastor, that's me. I need, I need to restore. I want, oh man, my life is blown in the wrong direction. I need it to blow in the right direction. Right there where you're at, just lift your hand. I've been blown in the wrong direction. I'll be, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I, 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 my life's been blown in the wrong direction. If that's you, right there, yeah, just lift your hand. That's me, Pastor. I need my life to blow in the right direction. I don't want, I, if that's you, right there, yeah, just lift your hand. I see some hands going up. God sees you. God sees you. Glory. Glory. Now, if you rose your hand, I, I, want, I, want, I want to pray with you real fast. I'm going to ask you to be bold enough to come up to the front. Come up to the front. Go ahead. Come on. Yeah, you come on. You're okay. What are people going to think? Who cares what people think? Divorce yourself from the opinions of people. People's opinions of you are not going to get you any closer to heaven. But you can let it stop you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This is what I want. I want everybody holding hands in the house. Except you up here. You're already up here. Now, you hold holding hands with somebody. And if you say, you know what? I should have been up there. But for some reason, I just couldn't make it. You're okay. You're okay. Y'all all right. You say, you know what? I should have been up there, but I just couldn't make it. I couldn't move my feet. I don't know what it is. If, you, if you're the person that says, I should have been up here, squeeze your, your neighbor's hand. That should have been me. Squeeze, the, squeeze your, your, your neighbor's hand. Now, if somebody squeezed your hand, I want you to bring them up here to the front. Tell them, I'll go with you. You ain't got to go alone. If somebody squeezed your hand, bring them up here. Tell them, you ain't got to go alone. I got your back. You ain't, and just stand. If someone squeezed your hand, stand with them. Stand with them. Stand with them. We don't, know, we don't need to know who squeezed who. Just stand with them. We ain't trying to embarrass nobody. We ain't trying to condemn nobody. Yeah, come stand, come stand with them. We don't want to embarrass nobody. We don't want to condemn nobody. But this is an altar of restoration. May the west wind blow. On this altar and restore the brokenness. Restore the devastation that the enemy has caused in your life from this day forward. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Arabakaya, Hida Bashondo, Horobokoya. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is blowing so gently in this place, restoring hearts, restoring lives, restoring the brokenness that the enemy has been bringing on these lives, the devastation that the enemy has been bringing on these lives. Your precious people, your sons, your daughters. They're yours, oh Lord. Oh, 
Harabakaya. Yes, sir. Harabakaya. I'm just going to do what the Holy Ghost told me to do. Hidabashunda. Horobokoya. I prophesy to you. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. I prophesy to the breath. Come from the four winds, O breath. Breathe on these that have been slain. Breathe on these that have been hurt. Breathe on these that have been devastated. Breathe on these that have been, uh, uh, man, the enemy just is coming against you. Breathe on them. Those that felt their hope has been cut off. Those that felt that their lives have been cut off. They felt that they were dry. They felt broken. Breathe on them. That they may live and be an exceeding great army for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo! Y'all give God a hand clap. Listen, look, y'all look at me. Y'all look at me. God loves you. Look at me. God loves you, and we love you. You're going to be okay. Amen? Uh, hope is not gone. You're going to be okay. Amen? Can y'all give God a big shout? Glory! Jesus!